This presentation is about the hidden faults that exist in PV wiring installations. The term hidden, is used to refer to these faults, because they are hidden from the conventional protection methods, and because these faults are largely unknown in the PV industry. These faults happen because of first and second earth faults that cause a short circuit between the positive and negative wires. These faults are potential fire hazards. The reason for being a fire hazard, is because these faults overload the cables way beyond what they were designed for. Unlike AC networks, where the circuit breaker or fuse protects the next section of cable, it will be shown that this does not happen in PV wiring. There are all sorts of current paths in PV wiring, where the usual fuse protection does not protect the next section of cable. This type of fault was identified in a 2012 report by the Solar America Board for Codes and Standards, after fires occurred at PV installations at Bakersfield and Mount Holy. This presentation further highlights this type of fault and its impact on PV wiring. This presentation is brought to you by Power on Technology. The hidden faults in PV wiring and the potential fire hazards are herewith explained. In this video, we cover the anatomy of a typical PV installation and proceed from there to illustrate an example of the hidden fault in such a PV installation. This presentation has been prepared by Dr. Andres Putter. Let's start with an overview of a typical PV installation. This is the building block used in all PV installations. It consists of a number of PV panels connected in series. Usually there are 12 to 16 panels connected in series. This series connection of the PV panels is referred to as a PV string. In most installations, there are several PV strings connected in parallel in a typical PV installation. Therefore, this is designated as PV string number 1. The earth connection is usually made with an earth stud in bar driven into the ground. This earth connection is made to all the conductive parts of the installation, specifically to the PV panel frames. The PV string has two poles, first is the negative pole, shown here in yellow. And the second pole is the positive pole, shown here in red. Included in the installation is a conventional fuse connected in series with positive pole. Several more strings are usually included in a typical PV installation. In this example, there is a total of four strings. In large PV farm installations, the number of strings run into the hundreds and more. The positive and negative poles of the individual strings are connected onto positive and negative bus bars. There is a fuse in series with the positive of each of the PV strings. As will be shown, these fuses offer limited protection. There are fault conditions where these fuses offer no protection at all. The fuses and bus bar are usually all housed in a combiner box, and usually also included as an isolator in series with each of the fuses. These isolators are not shown in this diagram. The positive and negative bus bars are connected to a three phase grid tied inverter. There is a large capacitor bank connected in parallel across the input of the inverter. There is usually also a conventional fuse connected in series with the positive line coming into the inverter. This fuse is usually inside the inverter enclosure. The three-phase output of the inverter connects to a load or in the case of a grid-tied inverter, it connects to the public utility grid. Let's have a look at the typical current values that flow in this PV installation. This is the single line diagram for our installation, that was explained in some detail in the previous slide. Let's assume that each of the positive lines carries 8 amps. Just as an observation for the sake of completeness, in practice the currents in each string are seldom equal. These currents flow into the common bus bar connection. These currents, return via the common negative bus bar connection, via the individual string negative lines. The total positive current, 
leaving the bus bar and entering the inverter, is equal to the sum of the four strings, which in this case is 32 amps. The same amount of current flows in the negative return line, back to the negative bus bar. In this slide we shall illustrate the first fault that occurs, which in this case is the negative to earth fault. Here we show an example of the first fault, negative to earth. One of the negative return lines of a PV string is shorted to the earth. This fault goes undetected, because there is no current flow, because there is no return path for the fault current. There is also very little that can be done to protect against this fault with the present setup. The only option is that this fault must be detected and repaired manually. But by then the damage would have been done. After the first fault that is negative to earth, a second fault can occur, and in this case, it is a positive to earth fault. In this slide we explore the combined effect of these two faults. Let's return to our single line diagram again, with the current flow shown in each to circuit paths. And here we indicate the first fault, negative to earth, introduced in the previous slide. Assume that the second fault, is a positive to earth fault from the main positive line feeding the inverter from the positive bus bar, carrying the combined current of all the strings, which in this example is 32 amps. As a result of this second fault, there is now a short circuit between the positive and negative of the installation via earth. The 32 amps flowing in the main positive line is shunted into this short circuit, as shown here. This 32 amps continue to flow along the earth short, from the second fault to the first fault. The 32 amps continue on into the fault on the negative line of the string. Once the 32 amps enter the negative line of the string, it splits into two. The first part is 24 amps that flow to the right and return to the negative bus bar. Note that in this section of the negative string line, the current flow reverses. The second part, 8 amps flow to the left and into the negative of the PV string, maintaining the 8 amps from this string. This happens because a PV string is essentially a current source. The 24 amps flow to the right and into the negative bus bar. Note that in this section of the cable, the current flow reversed from its normal direction of flow. But more importantly, it is three times higher than what the cable was designed for. This means that it is highly likely that this section of the cable will be damaged before any of the fuses clears the fault. Because the operating and short circuit current of PV panels typically differ by only about 7%, it is very difficult to get rapid fault clearing using conventional fuses. This fault can remain for more than a minute or more before any of the fuses clears the fault. Also note that this fault current increases with the number of strings in parallel. If there are 20 strings in parallel, this section of the string negative cable is subjected to 19 times the design current. This means that the situation gets worse with larger installations. Apart from the fault current from the PV strings, there is a second source of fault current with this type of fault. This slide shows where this current come from, and that it adds to the rest of the fault current. We refer back to the single line diagram. We recap the fault conditions, starting with the first fault between the negative of the string and earth. And the second fault from the main positive line, into the inverter to earth. The two faults are joined via the earth. This means that there is a direct short, between the main positive and the negative string. But, there is an additional current that flows from the main positive into the fault. And this is the discharge current from the DC link capacitors into the fault. This current flows through the inverter's internal fuse.
the capacitor discharge current, adds to the 32 amps from the PV strings, and increases the total current to some level above 32 amps. The exact increase above 32 amps depends on the resistance of the circuit, the capacitor value and the voltage that these capacitors are charged to. This increased current flows through the earth to the first fault, on the negative wire of the string. The current in the string negative increases to more than 24 amps, all in an 8 amp wire. The current to the left remains at 8 amps, due to the current source characteristics of PV string. In this slide, we show a summary of the fault condition analyzed thus far. There are two faults that occur to create the fault condition. The first fault, is a negative to earth fault on the PV string side of the combiner box. The second fault, is a positive to earth fault on the load side of the combiner box. The result is a short circuit between negative earth and positive. The result is that a section of the negative wire of the string with the short circuit, is overloaded. This same fault can occur on any of the negative lines of the string. As the number of strings increase, the probability of this fault increases. As more and more strings are combined in a hierarchical manner, the potential for this type of fault increases. Apart from the fault current from the PV strings, there is a second source of fault current with this type of fault. This slide shows where this current come from, and that it adds to the rest of the fault current. So far, we discuss the wiring, where there is a fuse in series with the positive of each string. But there are many installations where the fuses per string are left out. This shows the installation without these fuses. The only protection is a single fuse in the combined positive wire. Many residential installations are done this way. This means, that the first fault can now occur on the positive string wires as well. This opens up the situation for more fault combinations, than when there are a fuse in each positive string. So far, we considered the effect of the faults, but where do they come from? The first obvious course of these faults could be mechanical damage or incorrect installation. But there is a second long-term fault that is much more prevalent. Because a PV system is a DC system, it is prone to build up electrically induced buildup as shown here. Simply put, the conductors eventually weld themselves together in this way and causes a short. This is typical of any DC power system. It is called creepage. To minimize this problem in DC transmission networks, the polarity of the conductors is swapped periodically, typically every couple of months. This is not done on PV systems, and therefore PV systems are prone to creepage. It takes quite a long time for these to develop, and the incidence of such sort circuits are increasing. This is not just a problem with PV panels, but the same mechanism occurs in battery systems. And here are more examples of this. These are typical examples of a hidden fault, where first the one conductor shorts to ground and remains undetected, and then the second conductor shorts to ground cause a direct short between positive and negative lines. The fuse protection is too slow to immediately clear this fault. Also, inverters can offer no protection against upstream faults which are at the input to the inverter. In fact, as shown in another video, inverters contribute to the fault current. Protection against this type of fault requires a rethink of the DC system protection and requires new types of protection devices, other than just fuses. The unique current voltage relationship of PV panels makes it difficult to detect a short circuit and protect against it, as is also illustrated in a separate video.